I'm actually on my way, about an hour and a half away, to do a morning or a full day's stalking. I'll be in a high seat as the cover's going to be extremely thin now with the leaves starting to fall. Um, and also, high seats are notoriously safe when you're doing deer management. And today is actually a cold day. So we're going to be going after fallow, does, cricket, fallow bucks, so small antlers, and also red hinds, which are female red deer. So it's going to be my first time on those two species, and I'm really excited to watch their behavior and just to see them in their natural environment and to be able to have an opportunity to take some meat back to the freezer will be amazing. So I can't wait to bring you along and show you a little bit of what deer management means and what's involved. So I'll see you when I'm a little bit closer. This is a nice crisp, boom, round, dead fast. Nice. Very little kick. Yeah, really nice yeah it's yeah. just nice. That's perfect. So we've just got to the woodland and we're gonna be going on our way to a high seat. So I'll probably catch up with you guys when it's a bit lighter. First light's probably in about half hour, so we're gonna go get set up and I'll see you then. Thank you so much, Steve, by the way. It's a pleasure, mate. You've been all, the, all the hard work. Well, it's been good being out here with you, learning off the master. <laughs> really good opportunity, a fallow hind there. There's actually two fallow hinds, a younger, or oh, doe, I guess, a younger doe and uh, a much older one. They were both broadside to each other. So it's really kind of patience with that shot because you don't want to take a shot and injure two. Um, so, I had to wait for the older one to step out and I took a shot. The younger one was not young young, it wasn't a fawn, so it definitely can survive with the herd, like Steve was saying. And uh, yeah, I actually had a chance at the younger deer, but just with the trigger, I wasn't, I, uh, I felt the trigger safety and I thought, oh, I haven't chambered the round, but actually I just needed to pull a bit harder. So next time on that one. So guys, I was actually first time shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor round. Felt really good, really positive. So the deer have been working out these fringes and there's been like a lot of muntjac and pheasants this morning. It's been a good morning, hasn't it, Steve? Yeah, it's been awesome. Really it's good. Really good. Awesome. Yeah, saw that bug early on. Yeah. I'm silhouetted in the dark. Nice bug there, nice uh, fella bug. Went into the tree line there. I think that was the same one that came back. I think so, yeah. Um, he came back across, didn't he? Yeah. Towards that other herd that you spotted. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a wicked, wicked one. Really came to life once that sun came up. It did, yeah, absolutely. It's a lovely spot. So we're just about to leave the high seat now, so always good practice, like Steve was saying, to unload the rifle, make sure everything's safe. We'll go have a look at this fellow, eh? Hey. Hey. 
Lovely, lovely fellow doe here. It's the first time I've ever actually been so close, so it's quite a yeah, a little emotional trip, really. Thank you so much to this lovely animal, and thank you, Steve, as well. Pleasure, mate. It's a beautiful, good shot as well. I feel really good about that, and nice to do a little bit of population management um, for the for the estate that we're on. Really important as well to get some numbers down, so it's a perfect animal to take. Awesome. So guys, absolutely amazing to walk up and find that she's gone nicely. It's a massive animal as well compared to Roe, Muntjac and Chinese water deer, which I've only done before. So it's a really nice progression in my journey as a deer stalker and it's nice to have that experience of a high seat stalk and a uh, beautiful animal and I can't wait to hopefully enjoy some of the meat and uh, maybe even the hide so we'll see how that goes but I'll bring you in along for a little bit of the process if we do any growlicking or anything like that and uh, yeah thanks for watching so far and hopefully have a little bit of a successful afternoon as well we'll see what we can see but despite that it's just been absolutely wonderful to be out especially with Steve He's a great lad and, uh, yeah, can't recommend coming out and doing this yourself. Fallow are an amazing species. Really, really big. Much bigger than you assume. The difference between, like, um, and a, a wool bit. So you can see the pelage or the coat on the fallow here really lovely indication of spots and they're just starting to come into their winter coat so a lot more grey rather than that buff sandy colour they've got really pale underbelly and of course that really distinctive tail with a stripe right down it you can see that stripe carrying on all the way down its back to the back of its neck beautiful animal This is just handy for like... It's better than a GoPro in many respects, isn't it? We're just driving back now, myself and Steve, to the larder. We're going to get that fallow dough all prepped up, eh? Yep. And it'll be, uh, Sorted, man. It'll be it'll really be, good. Uh, get it back into the food chain. That's it. It's been a lovely, lovely morning. So looking forward to seeing the experience on a bit of a bigger animal and share a little bit with you guys as well. But obviously, you're a discretion. Might be a bit of blood and gore. So we're just about to head to the larder now. We've got all the lads behind. There's about five or six of us out today actually doing this cold day. So it's really nice to caught up with Graham, who I went on my last stalk with down in South Ayrshire. So I'll bring the camera a bit closer to him a bit later, get you to catch up and see how he is. Like I said, there might be a little bit of viewer discretion advised right now, because we're about to go to the larder. I'll keep you posted. I can't wait to get my hands into this fallow and just learn a little bit more about their anatomy, have a look at the stuff for the identifiables for their diseases. And uh, yeah, can't wait to learn a little bit more. It's been a beautiful morning. And I think we're going back out this afternoon for an hour or two just to see if we can get any more cull animals for the estate. I'll see you soon. There he is, Graham. How is it going, buddy? Right, so how are you? Really good to see you. You too. You have a good morning. Three. Nice. Three. Well done. Three. That's good. Graham took me out up in South Ayrshire in the last trip when I was up in uh, with the Lucky Hunter, won that competition. So it's really good to catch up with you again, bud. And your brother Steve. Ah, Lovely lad. <laughs> He's my arm. He's alright. Yeah, right. Are you sure? Right. We're all eating there. Uh... Take that 
So deer are getting gralic right now. I'm just watching the process, learning how to do it on a bigger animal, considering I've only done like roe, muntjac before. So it's really good to see how it's done. I'm not showing too much because it is quite gory and there's a lot going on. I don't want to be too intrusive with the camera, but I'll show you the carcass afterwards. And uh, yeah, can't wait to have some of this meat. It's going to be amazing and get out for the rest of the day. Just had a little break, went up to Graham's hotel room. He let me keep on the sofa, which was really nice. We had about three, four hours in between the morning stalk and this afternoon. It's now about half two. So we've got a good while until it starts getting dark, which is obviously around five, half five, six at this time of year. So we're going to go back out on the high seat, see if we can see any more fallow or red hinds, any muntjacs or some prickets or knobbers for some fallow as well. So it should be a really good little high seat session. Um, try to get the numbers down for the estate. Um, definitely needs needs a bit of management because that's what we're here to do really good to get that fallow dough earlier as well so it'd be nice to get something else to give to the local butchers the game dealer and support the local economy that way i'll probably be taking one carcass back with me so i can tan a hide because i've always wanted a fallow hide and it'd be really special to do that myself um, and of course i'll be keeping the meat in the freezer and sharing that with the family um, cooking up some pies and all sorts so I can't wait to bring you on this stalk you should see a little bit more as it's a bit lighter so I'll catch up with you when I'm there and hopefully it's a little bit drier at the moment we've got quite a bit of rain but we'll see so just now taking a walk over to the high seat guys going to a bit of a different spot of the estate this afternoon so there should be plenty of fallow this side. Not that we were lacking where we were this morning. It was beautiful to see everything come alive. It's a really nice high seat there, backing onto that pine. That overlooks all of this lovely woodland. Mont Jack. It's just starting to get near last light, guys. So we're just keeping an eye out. We've seen a few month track does, a few bucks, just loads of pheasants starting to roost now. It's been a lovely, lovely time out. It's not always about getting something, it's just about being out here and experiencing it. So, really nice to spend time with Steve up here. Thank you, mate. Pleasure, mate. It's been fun. It's been good. Yeah. So, we'll keep you posted if we see anything else. If not, we'll probably head back to the truck.
Guys, all done with the stalk now. Absolutely amazing experience. Thank you so much. Steve, there's a monk jack actually Lovely just there. Been nice having you out. It's been really good and uh, can't wait for the next one. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'll probably finish the episode with a little bit of butchery of that fallow deer that I'm going to take home. So I'll see you guys probably tomorrow when I'm back home. The utility room now. I just put a bag over her neck because there was a little bit of blood. I'm just transporting it through. Um, but going to start by skinning her up. So I'm going to run a cut from here all the way up into that opening and the same from there all the way into here. You can probably see I've got some bin bags. I've actually taped those under the work surface. So then I've got easy access for waste to go in and it also protects underneath. I'm going to do the same on here, but on the front legs, I'm going to go from the inside up to here to open it up so it kind of splays it. It's not really... Uh, the most easiest to join up a cut because if I went down here I'll be coming up through here and opening this lovely bit of chest hide so the shortest distance is for me to go into here and open that up and I can trim the hide as I need. Really impressive from the 6.5 Creedmoor the exit wound is small so it's not going to be too much damage to this hide. It's a really impressive round and probably one that I'll aim to get on an FAC in the future. But you can see it's lovely, lovely hide, really beautiful pelage. It's got that traditional black stripe up the rump from the tail. And it's really, really gorgeous, lovely sandy tone. She's a lovely, lovely example of a fallow. Very thankful to have taken her and, yeah, will not waste anything. Going to use this hide for camps in the future. You can see how thick that hair is. And, of course, they're hollow fibred, so they're going to be even nice and warm in the winter. Now, traditionally... This would have been done hung. I don't have anywhere to hang this deer, so I have to get it done fairly quickly. And it's a bit of a more difficult process skinning like this because normally you'd peel down the hide. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have to work kind of in reverse. I'm actually going to just kind of work my way down on a flat turner over. Um, so it'll be a little bit more tricky, hence why I won't show you the whole process. But it's a bit more similar to if you were field dressing a deer, so I don't mind the practice. And that cut all the way up there, and by running it up the skin, you reduce the amount of hair that you cut. If you cut down, you can cut across the hairs. You're always going to get some split hairs, um, but nevertheless, it's good to... Minimise that if you can. So you can see I'm just working that membrane really lightly with the tip of the knife. And just following around on the natural join. Up down. I can pull that down the haunch there. So I've almost finished skinning the deer, I'm just coming up this side of the rib cage and uh, I'm fleshing as I go along as the best as I can. Just skin that leg down again, same as the rear. And what I'm going to do is I'll just wet down my hand, just wipe it over this carcass and my, the hairs will cling to it. So any that are on there, I could just get off in this process, like so. Get those into the bin bag. And then clean all the work surfaces. I've skinned the fallow. I'll show you the skin in a little bit. I'll go outside. It's just raining at the moment. I'll hold it up for you, show you exactly what it looks like. It's beautiful. But I'm going to actually butcher this up now. Um, I'm not going to do a video on how to butcher, but I'll show you the cuts I do get from it. If you want to see a video on butchering deer, I have done one before, but there is also loads on YouTube. Um, my favourite's probably Scott Rear or Steve Brunella um, from Meat Eater. Scott Rear is a UK guy, 
Um, he's a butcher, does some really good work. I've watched him multiple times doing stuff. So yeah, go check either of them out or one of my previous videos. And I will show you back here when I've got some cuts all up and done. Just taking out the kidney and you can see just how much fat is on there. Coming into winter now and it is a gorgeous, really healthy kidney that, look at that, beautiful. Really, really nice, that silver skin. Some little fat bits on there, but really good quality. So I've finished butchering guys, I've got a big pile of fat and off cuts here for burgers, I've got the two kidneys there, I've got some braising steak, I've got two amazing back straps or tenderloins, whatever you want to call it, fillets, I've got four shanks, there's two there and two here, I've got a rolled shoulder, I've got another rolled shoulder. I've got two haunches as well. Just broken one of the haunches down into their primal. So I've got top side, silver side, and a knuckle. There's the femur. Um, and yeah, there's the other one. I'm going to leave that as a roasting joint for probably like a hangy oven or a pit oven or something. But it's absolutely amazing. And all the bones as well are in this pan. So I'm going to make a big venison stock, which is going to be amazing. There we have it, guys. That's the fallow deer all prepared. Like I said, I'll get outside, I'll hold up the hide so you can see it. And uh, yeah, that'll probably be it for today. But the next episode is going to be tanning that hide. So let's see that and then we'll see you soon. It's a good size hide. And the colour is absolutely amazing. The patterning is proper traditional fallow. A little bit of the tail there. So vacuum sealed them all up now into different portions. Got loads of different cuts. Really, really good to have this much venison for the freezer. So yeah, definitely give it a go, guys. So yeah, that's everything done now. Big thanks to Ellie for helping out vacuum seal that. It's been a long day. Um, definitely hard work, but shrewd, skinning, portioning, everything. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it and can't wait to eat some of this. Stay safe, guys. Until next time, I'll see you soon.